Good morning, everyone, and good morning to those that are online as well. And a special welcome to John, who used to worship with us 13 years ago. So if you remember John Gunn, please make sure you, you speak to him uh, through the greeting of peace and also afterwards. Please stand as we sing. Good morning everyone, please feel free to take your seats. My name is Tim and I'm part of the staff team here at St Mark's and it is a pleasure to be with you this morning, whether you're joining us in the pews or whether you're joining us online. And today we're going to look at the passage where Jesus says, show me the money. And he talks about what is God's and what is Caesar's. Um, and we look forward to thinking about that. And part of that passage is, what is God's? Who do we owe our loyalty to? And so as we begin our service, our Lord Jesus Christ said to us, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. 
This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. Shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is also our communion service. And so as we have that, if you're online, if you want to prepare the elements, if you had them, you will be able to join in with us uh, over your screen. And I would love to invite the children to come up for this next bit. We're going to have the kids' song. So you're welcome to come up with your parents if you would like. This song is not just a kids' song. It's actually a family song. And it reminds us that we're all part of God's family. So whether we're single, married, whatever, we are still part of God's family. So kids, if you'd like to come down, we're going to do some actions as well. Please stand. And I'm encouraging you adults to also do some of the actions. You may not want to do all of them, but you can do some.
morning as we do the greeting of the peace together. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our children and our teens are going to go to Sunday Club and to Milo Club. If you are new or visiting us, you're welcome to go with them. Follow a parent and a child who are about the size of your children, and you'll work out where to go. Let's say hi to one another. Hello again, everyone. We'll have plenty of time to continue our conversations after the service over morning tea and coffee in the hall just over there. We're going to have our Bible readings now. And you'll notice that with our Bible readings, we're going to be making an effort over the next, well, we're just going to be making an effort now to make sure that we're including Chinese on our slides to be a welcome and inclusive congregation because we do have many people who watch online, who join us, who speak Chinese, as well as English. So I think Glennie is coming up to do our first Bible reading. Our passage this morning comes from the first book of Thessalonians, Chapter 1, verses 1 till 10. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our Lord and God your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so, you became a model to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God became known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell us how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us 
from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is from Matthew 22, starting at 15. They send in the lawyers. Send in the lawyers. Maybe they sent in the clowns, but they sent in the lawyers. So the Pharisees went out and they laid plans to trap him in their words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said. We know that you're a man of integrity, that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Jesus knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. But they bought him a denarius. And he asked them, whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, to give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, but to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. The same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses told us that if a man dies without having children, his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for him. Now there were seven brothers amongst us. The first one married and died, and since he had no children, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second one, and the third, right on down to the seventh. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be of the seven? since all of them were married to her. Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said to you, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. This is the word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, Sir Marks, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to formally thank Stephen Hale for setting the theme of how to pay up for today. So we're not dealing with the second part of the passage, but there are communication cards. And if there is interest, I am very, very happy to preach on that second part of Matthew 22 uh, and, uh, and answer the questions for that as well. But today we're looking at verses 15 to 22 and how to pay up. And so we're going to look at the controversy. Then we're going to look at relating to the world and giving responsibly to Caesar. And then finally answering the question, how to pay up. 
So let's begin with the controversy in Matthew 22. Because what we have before us is a little bit of a battle of wits. Jesus is asked a question about paying taxes to Caesar, and those asking the question would have been almost drooling with excitement over his answer. The Pharisees and the Herodians who put this question to Jesus are political opponents united just for one purpose, and that is to go after Jesus. You may know that the Herodians are supporters of Rome, supporters of Roman power, and the Pharisees sit at the opposite end of the extreme, definitely not supportive of Roman power, definitely not supportive of Roman taxes. However, both are completely, we've got a cohesive team right here in this, trying to trap Jesus with their clever plan. So verse 15, then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap, to ensnare, to entrap Jesus in his words. Why are they doing that? What's, what's at stake that they're going after him in this way? Because it's about much more than paying taxes, much more than that. It's about how people relate to the world and worldly authority, and it's about how people relate to God. The tax in question, it's not raising GST from 10% and going up more than that. It's not about that. It's a poll tax of one denarius. We're not even talking about a huge sum of money here. We're talking about one day's wage for someone of, of a poorer nature going out and working. And so the real issue for a Jewish person was that it was a poll tax. It's a head tax. It's a fee for the privilege of being a subject of Caesar. So you can understand why they're not feeling so warm about paying this denarius. Now, historically, about 25 years before this event even happened, there'd been a revolt led by a man by the name Judas of Galilee. Maybe you've heard of him. And Judas the Galilean had said, we're not going to be slaves of this idolatrous Caesar. So uh, only God is our king, not Caesar. And so they took up arms. They'd gone into the temple and cleared out the Romans and the Gentiles out of the temple. They'd stirred people up into a revolt, which ended very, very, very badly for the Jewish people. But now look at where this passage sits in the Gospels. It's a bit of a key. Matthew, Mark and Luke all have this account after Jesus cleansed the temple, driving out the money changers, the animal sellers, saying, my father's house is a house of prayer. And we can see that from what's been going on, they're setting a trap for Jesus. There's an opportunity to paint him either as a supporter of Rome, which would mean he'd lose the support of the people, or as a zealot in opposition to Rome, like Judas the Galilean, having just cleansed the temple, which would mean Roman soldiers would be reaching for their spears to deal with Jesus. So the Herodians and the disciples of the Pharisees see this opportunity to put Jesus into a vice and squeeze. A vice and squeeze. No matter what he says, Yes or no, they are so sure we've got him. We've got him today. Verse 16, they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you're a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? They're very smooth, aren't they? Very, very smooth. They set their trap with flattery. Jesus, you've got integrity. Jesus, you teach the way of God. Jesus, you're not swayed by appearances. And one commentator that I was reading said their flattery is like a boomerang that they send out and comes back and hits them right in the forehead themselves. Because Jesus is all the things that they're saying. He is true. It's actually Jesus' opponents who are false. Jesus isn't swayed by appearances, 
but they are slaves and enslaved to what other people think. Jesus teaches the ways of God and they teach human ways. So how will Jesus answer? Because they give him two options, don't they? They give him the option of yes or no. And here is the intelligence of Jesus. Here is the wisdom of Jesus. And we see in his answer that finite human beings should never test the infinite, omnipotent God in a battle of wits. So how do we give responsibly to Caesar? Verse 18, but Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. Because he didn't have one. They did. They brought him a denarius and he asked them, whose image is this and whose inscription? Because the coin is the key to Jesus' answer because it has an icon on it. It has an image of it, of its owner and an inscription. And the inscription said, Tiberius Caesar, worshipful son of the divine Augustus, with an image of his head on one side. And when you flipped it over, it had his mother's head, Livia, on the other. And so when Jesus answers their entrapping question about paying taxes to Caesar, that's what he said. Whose picture, whose icon is on the coin? Verse 21, Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Now, without reference here to any particular leader, no particular political party, we're not being political here today, but one thing I've noticed, and maybe you have too, is how leaders tend to avoid answering direct questions when they're asked a yes or no question. And I'm sure you've noticed it by the grins on your faces. They, they, they don't want to answer things that they think are going to portray them in a negative way. And what happens? They start spinning, don't they? Their wheels are spinning. You can see them thinking. They've got all the avoidance tactics and the diversion tactics going on. And so the journalist who's interviewing them will try and bring them back. And we're listening. Or we're watching the news and our eyes are rolling back in our heads. And we're thinking, just answer the question. Now, what do you see happening as you look at this passage in verse 22 to those listening to Jesus? What are they doing? How are they reacting? Because they're not rolling their eyes. He doesn't give a yes or no answer, but they're not rolling their eyes. They're not saying answer the question. They are astonished. They are completely amazed in verse 22 because Jesus' answer is so wise that he shatters all of their assumptions and completely changes the outcome. Caesar's icon is on the coin and so the coin belongs to Caesar in line with the authority that God has given Caesar. God has given Caesar. When Jesus stands before Pontius Pilate and Pilate says to Jesus, don't you realize I've power to free you or crucify you? Jesus responds to him and says, you would have no power over me unless it was given to you from above. Caesar has authority over some things, but not everything. He has authority only over what God has given. The coin belongs to Caesar, so if he asks, give it to him. And as Christians, we hear the Apostle Paul in Romans 13 saying, this is also why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honour, then honour. And Jesus isn't saying that giving to Caesar what is Caesar's, it's not giving a donation, you're not giving a gift. That's not what's going on here. He's saying give back what belongs to another. He teaches that Caesar, that that government have authority over some things, but not over everything. Caesar is not ultimate. 
So we give back responsibly. That's how we do it. We're discerning. We're respectful. We honour those that God has put in authority because the Lord commands us to. But he also teaches, and we need to clock this too, that there are limits to what we give of ourselves. And why are there limits? And we need to ask ourselves, well, what if Caesar, what if those in authority demand that we turn away from God? What if those in authority over us tell us or demand that we step outside of God's will, step outside of God's counsel? What do we do then? You see, there are limits. There are limits. When the Sanhedrin put Peter and the apostles in prison for preaching the gospel in Acts, what happened? Number one, an angel let them out so that they could continue preaching. But number two, when the Sanhedrin accused them of filling Jerusalem with the good news of Jesus, Peter says in Acts 5, 29, we must obey God rather than human beings. We must obey the Lord because our obedience to the world has limits. We give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. St. Mark's, how do we pay up? How do we pay up? That's our question today. This, the coin has Caesar's image on it. Whose image do you bear? Whose image do you bear? You, me, we collectively belong to God. Then God said in Genesis 1, let us make humankind in our likeness. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We are God's image bearers. That is a huge thing. We were created to give him and only him our unconditional allegiance alone. We were created to love him. We were created to honour the Lord. We're created to be his with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, everything that we are. So what do we give to God? How do we pay up with everything that we have? And we are absolutely accountable to God for what we do with every single breath that he gives to us. And that also means that every single person living and moving and having their being here in the city of Burundara bears God's image and is infinitely valuable to him. No matter where they come from, no matter what their background is, they are infinitely valuable to God and therefore, St. Mark's, they are infinitely valuable to us. God created them as his image bearer and he is drawing people to himself. People who are trying to find meaning, people who are trying to find purpose in their lives in things so often that bear the icon, that bear the image of this world but can never ever deliver what they believe they are going to give to them. What only Jesus Christ can give to them. And as Christians, we can make use of the things of this world. God has given us many gifts, but they cannot, they must not rule over our hearts. The things of this world can't become ultimate things that drive us, that rule over us, that rule over our plans, that rule over our decisions, that rule over our relationships, that rule over how we serve and interact with the community as a church. Our whole heart belongs to our God and Saviour and we can't give it to anything or anyone else because it belongs to God alone. And that can be difficult. That can be very difficult and you know that because you are going to find yourselves in uncomfortable situations in the world. You're going to feel at times like you are in a vice grip and where you're looking at your circumstances and what's going on and thinking to yourself, you know, I need to ask myself, is, is, is this okay where I am? Am I giving myself too fully to the world here? Am I giving myself too fully to the values of this world? 
Or do I need to make a decision? Do I need to make a change? What is God calling me to in this scenario? Do I need to make a change? What's God calling me to? What's God calling us collectively to? You see, the Pharisees and their disciples and the Herodians should have been giving God their repentance, not trying to kill the Son of God. They should have been turning to Him with all of their heart. And while they were amazed at His wisdom, and maybe as we hear the passage and we're amazed, amazement doesn't save us. Being in awe of things that Jesus does doesn't give deep, lasting change. It's only as we learn to trust Jesus, it's only as we learn to rely on His wisdom, it's only as we lean into Him, not our own wisdom, that the spiritual fruit grows, that we go deeper into our life in Christ. So while paying up means giving our lives, every sphere of our lives to God, by the way, Remember, giving ourselves to God is always a response. It's always a response to the amazing grace that you and I have first received. You are not accepted by God because of your obedience, because you give your life. You are accepted and saved for all eternity by what He has given to you, the righteousness and the beauty of Jesus Christ. That's the power of the cross. And as we stand in its power, St. Mark's, we don't pay up with our lives. You're not going to make a decision today to go all in with Jesus and to leave the things of the world in its proper place. You're not going to do that because, you know, you have to. We want to do it because we want to move ahead. We want to go with our present, with our risen and with our wise Lord Jesus. We want to live our lives fully with Him and for him and the flourishing of this city because of what we have first received through the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ for us. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. That's what melts our hearts. That's what gives us the desire to even want to go this way. We give to Caesar responsibly, but we give to God all that we have and all that we are in response to all that he's given us. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds and keep us safe in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Friends, I want to draw your attention now to the communication cards that will be in front of you in the pews, Uh, that if there is something that you would like to communicate, if this raises a prayer point for you, if this raises feedback for you or something that you would like to communicate in confidence with me, uh, then please write on the communication cards. You'll get a minute to do that fold it over and then as we sing our next song, as we respond to God, our free will offerings will be gathered for the work of the kingdom here at St. Mark's and as the offering bags go by, you can place your communication cards in there and Tim will then come up and pray for them and then they will be given to me uh, to uh, respond to and I respond to every communication card I receive. God bless you. I'll just give you a moment to fill those cards in, those that want to.
Please stand. Spread your wings of mercy over me And guard my heart with true humility No shadow of the darkness pressing in Only the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings Overshadowing No refuge will I seek but God alone No hiding place save only at your throne Only the cross, the blood to wash my sin only the holy overshadowing underneath your wings overshadowing you are my shield and my glory you are the lifter of my head and though storms may rage around me I'll be safe within beneath the holy overshadowing no burden on my back too hard to bear only the easy load you me where until these troubles pass my heart will sing praise for the holy overshadowing underneath your wings overshadowing you are my shield to pray for us after this. Please be seated. Father, we're thankful for the gifts people have given of their time, of their money, of their feedback, both in person and electronically. We pray that you would take and use these gifts through the power of your Holy Spirit for our good and for your glory and for the sake of the gospel in word and deed in this community. We lift all these up to you and trust them to you in Jesus' name through the power of the Holy Spirit, and for your glory. Amen.
Let us pray together. Father God, creator of heaven and earth, we lift our hearts to you in adoration and praise. Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, Saviour, Lamb of God, we worship you and we bow our heads in gratitude for all you have done for us. Holy Spirit, comforter, guide, our ever-present heavenly companion, we thank you, we welcome you, we open ourselves fully to you. Father God, while we can set our hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at your right hand, we also live in this earthly world and our hearts are sad. Sad and troubled. We see and hear of so much conflict, so much suffering, so much injustice, so much loss of life, so much poverty and hunger and distress. In ourselves, we feel helpless, overwhelmed at times, Father. And so we, together, cry out to you for your power, your love, your grace and mercy to be manifest in all the conflict zones to all the desperate people. May the glory and power of Jesus be seen and lifted high everywhere in this world where it is needed. We pray for all people in leadership around our world. We ask you to give them your wisdom, graciousness and your directions. Give them courage to do what is right according to your ways. And Father, we turn our hearts closer to home and we think of those known to us personally who need you in special ways at this time. And we name them in our minds and in our hearts. And so we lift before you for your blessing those in hospital, those who are unwell, those who are struggling with life, those who are looking for work, those who are overwhelmed with too much work, and those with family struggles. And Father, we cannot leave this time of prayer together without thanking you. We thank you for our freedom to worship you, to meet openly together. We thank you for our safety here in Australia. We thank you for the safe arrival of Tumalo, a son for Tendai and Antoinette. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst at St. Mark's. We thank you for the new life and spiritual growth you're bringing forth. We thank you for our pastoral team. We thank you for our lay leaders. We thank you for all who serve in any way. And we thank you for all who attend, whether online or here in church. We thank you for each one who make up this part of Christ's body called St. Mark's. And even now we say thank you to you, Father, for what you will do. 
for we know that you're able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to your power that is work within us. Thank you, Father. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare for communion, as we prepare ourselves for that, we're going to do a time of confession together. I'll say this verse is from Isaiah, and then we will pray together. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. Knowing the goodness of God and our failure to respond with love and obedience, let us confess our sins, saying together, Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Church 
Please be seated. Just invite those who are joining us via live stream today to prepare your elements if you're communing at home or unable to be with us. But the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your own image. We praise you for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life, offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, we lift our voices to praise you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine and pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share his body and his blood. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread and when he'd given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns Come, Lord Jesus. Father, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we who share these gifts be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, there to feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Amen. A one body, for we all share in the one bread.
Sorry. Everything is ready.
may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood strengthen you and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Gracious God, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you for assuring us of your goodness and love and that we are living members of Christ's body. Amen. One of the wonderful things about being brought together and the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is that we can come together as a community. One of the ways that we do that as a community is making sure that we have a safe church. Thank you to everyone who has worked so hard to do the compliance. I know it's a burden. I know many of you will have lots of compliance things to do, but we're thankful that you have borne that burden so that people might have a safe and loving space to be at St. Mark's. We need to have done our level one training by 31st of October. Everyone who is a volunteer at St. Mark's needs to have done that. If you haven't, you will need to come off the roster on the 1st of November. You can talk to Pam or Lizzie about it, or if there's something you feel you want to keep private and confidential around this issue of Safe Church, you can actually talk to Vaughan or myself about that if you would like. So please feel free and welcome to do that. Tuesday week, also the 31st of October, we have Bright Party coming up. This is a great opportunity to welcome people into our community. Lizzie still needs volunteers, but if you have friends or family who have young children, this is a great way to include them into St. Mark. So please be inviting people and speaking to Lizzie if you would like to volunteer. We have lessons and carols coming up. Yvonne, who's been playing so beautifully on our piano, organizes the choir. You know how wonderful this is, is a way to share the good news of Jesus with our community. If you would like to be in the choir, please let Yvonne know by November 6th. She would love to have you in the choir. We know we already have a good number of people in it, so please come and join in. We have a prayer retreat coming up on Saturday, the 11th of November. The last one we had was a wonderful opportunity to reflect in prayer together for our community and for ourselves. Love to see you at the next one on the 11th of November. And we're going to have our hymn now. Please stand as we sing praises to the Lord.
God, prepare our hearts for what you have for us next and give us a heart of faith to go where you are calling us to go. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favour and give you his peace today and forevermore. Amen. We're going. We're going to go have a final song after the sending out, and then you're very welcome to join us in the hall for tea or coffee and some biscuits, and of course to fellowship together. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. There is no final song. Let's do it again. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.